So on Monday, it felt like the sky was falling. But of course, that weakness began over a month ago. The question is, is this crash over? Well, I'm going to show you why it probably is for the short term. I'm also going to show you how to protect yourself in case another wave of selling is coming. So let's dive into some quick points here. The recent weakness that we had in the market was primarily in the large cap tech stocks related to artificial intelligence. And of course, we know the story of Nvidia being the hottest stock among those big companies over the last couple of years. And it really got overbought. And by overbought, I mean emotional investors were chasing the stock higher and really paying too much for the company's fundamentals. It doesn't mean it's a bad company. It means that the price was too high. Well, we've had this correction over the last number of weeks, and that has brought price back to the weekly upward trend line. I'm going to show you this in just a moment, but it's a very important lesson to carry into your normal analysis of the markets. It really helps you understand when markets reverse. So I'll show you that in a moment. Now, the other thing that we want to think about is the potential for another wave of selling because we could still see more of a crash in perhaps September, October, and I'm going to show you what to watch for. So let's first dive into the chart of the NASDAQ, and this is the weekly upward trend line. Now, what I've done to draw this is I started at the lows over here, and I cut it across this, what we call an inflection point. And if you connect those dots, you have a line that terminates right where we are now. And this is the open on Monday morning was right at the lows, and we've really moved up since that very weak start to the day on Monday. And that's what you should expect. Simple rules in chart analysis, when you run away from the trend line, usually come back to it. So here we ran up, we come back. We run up, we come back. And here we've run up and we've come back to that long-term upward trend line. That's expected, that's normal. And when price falls into support, there's another important rule, when price falls into support, you usually get a bounce off of support. Now, what is support? Well, support can be an upward trend line like I've shown here. It can also be a horizontal trend line, which I've drawn there at those lows. And so you can see that price fell into horizontal support, but also into the upward trend line of support. So it was very likely that the market was going to bounce after the week open on uh, Monday. Now, if we look at the chart of the S&P 500 equal weighted, this is a very different chart. It's still the same 500 companies that make up the S&P 500, but it is equal weighted. And you can see that the equal weighted version of the S&P really hasn't done all that well. And it's simply fallen into support where it's likely to bounce. So what are we gonna watch for as a cue or a indication that there's more weakness coming. Well, if we go back to this NASDAQ chart, typically when you bounce off of support, you'll rally higher. And the question is, are we going to rally and hit the old highs? Are we going to rally and make new highs? Or are we going to rally and make a falling top? If the market makes a falling top and then breaks this upward trend line of support from a falling top, then it's likely that we're going to see more weakness. And again, that might happen in September, October, historically bad months for the stock market. The critical thing to answer this question is what does the US Federal Reserve do with interest rates? Now, the hope was that we were going to get a rate drop of a quarter point. And after some weak economic numbers, now the market is hoping or expecting that the Fed will lower rates by half a point at the September meeting, which is in the middle of September. If that September meeting doesn't yield what the market hopes for, that would be a catalyst for more weakness. If economic numbers come out and show that the economy is slowing much more significantly than expected, then that would also be a catalyst for more weakness. Now, all of these things have a couple of weeks, three, four weeks to pan out before we get to that Fed meeting, I guess about a month now. And so We've got some time for the market to bounce back, some optimism, some people bargain hunting. If we don't make a new high, if we make a falling top and then start to break down through that upward trend line, we should expect some weakness. And on the 
equal weighted version of the chart. If we start to move down through these lows here, which is the sort of important support on RSP, which is the, again, equal weighted version of the SPY, then that's going to be a negative. Now, I want to do my analysis of the overall market. So we're going to jump into stock scores. And here we have a chart of the S&P 500. This is a short term chart, 30 day, two hour chart. And you can see if I draw a line across these tops, that is my downward trend line. You'll notice I've ignored this. I just feel like this is the best fit of most of these points. And Monday, we were way down here. The distance below the trend line is far. That means the market's oversold. Fear has caused people to accept prices that are too low. And we've basically remade or re, uh, we've made back those losses. Now, are we going to break this downward trend line this week? In the short term, we've built a rising bottom, so that would be good. I think we probably stall there early next week and then perhaps most likely break through that downward trend line and continue the recovery. If we look at the long term version of the NASDAQ and we're going to look at the daily chart now, you can see just how significant the sell off was. And if I draw a line across these bottoms, look at how that support of that trend line has held up. Now the NASDAQ needs to break this downward trend line. Maybe it'll pull back, build a rising bottom and then break and start to make back some of these losses. I do not think that we are going to go to new highs on the NASDAQ. I think that the market is rotating out of large cap tech into the broader market, which means areas of the market like the small cap area. This is the IWM. Let's take a look at the three year weekly here. It had made this breakout. It has retraced to support and bounced. Maybe we'll see this bounce back. Again, a lot of it has to do with interest rates. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at the Canadian market, T.XIU. And I'll have my ratings and all of these sectors in just a moment. So T.XIU, six month time frame, quite a bit of volatility, which shows uncertainty. I can say that because if I draw a line across the tops and I draw a line across the bottoms, see how the volatility is expanding. That means investors are growing uncertain. Anytime volatility is expanding, what it really means is that investors are not sure about what stocks are worth. And that a lot of that has to do with the state of the economy, the state of interest rates. Are they going to continue to fall? Do we have a recession coming? Those sorts of things. The general trend in the Canadian market is still up, but with a lot of volatility. Now, if we look at the three year uh, weekly chart, there's, that's where you can see the trend is up just with lots of volatility here at the front. And we should move back toward the highs, but it's a difficult market to trade because of the volatility. Now, next chart I want to look at is gold, which has held up quite well. You can see generally moving up. Anytime there's rising bottoms on a chart, you have optimism and we have that. A little bit of falling tops in the last few weeks, but this is what we call a pennant pattern. And pennant patterns are a compression of volatility. It's like a coiled spring. And then you expect it to break to the upside because the trend into the pennant was up. So we'll watch for that. I think gold should be monitored for a possible entry point. USO is oil. And if we look at the uh, one month chart, we see that the trend is down, but we've had a nice recovery at the end of this week, bringing us to the downward trend line, probably pull back and then try to break it. We may get a little resurgence in oil. And if we look at the three year weekly chart, we see that that's likely to happen because we've bounced off the trend line and will now move up towards support or pardon me, resistance. Notice that volatility is compressing. So the, the level of swings is getting narrower and narrower, and that should resolve with an upside breakout for oil. It's not going to happen next week. It's something weeks or months down the road, but it is building a decent pattern toward that. So I think oil can be bought on weakness, but don't chase strength. All right, final uh, couple charts here. Let's take a look at the US dollar. And we can see that it's generally been sideways for the last little while. Looking at the three year chart, it, uh, it's basically neutral. If we look at the very short term chart, there is a downward bias as the market expecting 
U.S. interest rates to fall. That makes the U.S. dollar a little less desirable. You don't want to buy as much U.S. bonds, that sort of thing, because the yield is less. And let's take a look at Bitcoin as our second to last chart. Big sell-off in Bitcoin, now rebounding, but I'm worried because there are falling tops on this chart, which to me points to lower prices. Now, before we get too negative, we do have um, some support here, which the market's trying to get back above. It was in this trading range for six months or so. Should get back into that, but all of the volatility shows a lot of uncertainty. And so I think it's a very difficult thing to trade. If you own it, if you own Bitcoin, I'd be pretty careful. I don't like the uh, volatility and the uncertainty that's showing up there. Now, the final chart and perhaps the most important is TLT. Let's take a look at the three year weekly. And there we can see downward trend line that was broken two weeks ago from a rising bottom. That points to an upward move in the bond market, which means a downward move for interest rates. So it's likely that this market, the bond market, is likely to move up, interest rates likely to move down. That'll be supportive for stocks. That'll happen in anticipation of that September Fed meeting. The real question then becomes, does the Fed disappoint or meet expectations or maybe even exceed expectations? Right now, expectations are for a roughly 75% chance of a half point cut and a 25% chance of a quarter point cut, but that's always changing as the market moves around. So my ratings then, we've got uh, bearish in both time for, or bearish in the short term for US large cap and NASDAQ, but neutral long term. Neutral on both time frames for the small cap stocks, they look a little better, mostly because they didn't make as much of a gain, so they don't have as much to lose. Same for the Canadian market. Gold neutral in the short term, but improving. Bullish long term. Oil still bearish short term, but it's close to turning that and long term neutral. Same for US dollar. Bitcoin neutral on both time frames, but very volatile, showing a lot of uncertainty. And then bonds bullish on both time frames. All right, let's take a look at the trade of the week. It's a pretty quiet week this past week. Summer hours, uh, summer trading hours, always a little slower, but there's always something to trade. And the key thing when trading in the summer market is to focus on stocks that have abnormal volume, call them alpha stocks, and just trade breaks of pullbacks, breakouts from low volatility, all of the things that I talk about in the active trader stuff on stockscores.com. You can learn more about that at www.stockscores.com. All right, so here's a stock that was quite abnormal. Starting in the um, extended hour session on HUGE, H-U-G-E was very active pre-market on Friday. And then on the open Friday, inevitably when you gap up, you get this pullback, great. Then you start to move up to the highs of the day, a little pullback here and a break, that's an aggressive entry. And then you had another entry here on the break of a pullback. Notice this little pink and yellow dot and this pink and yellow dot, that's my indicator called an action candle, and that's available to my active trader students. Again, more on that at stockscores.com. But generally, trade worked out pretty well. On a slow day, stock moving from around 20 cents to hitting a high of 35 later in the day. So on a percentage basis, it's a pretty substantial move. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Do you think the market has another wave down coming? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you're not subscribed, and many of you are not, please subscribe. It helps the channel get a little bigger following, and that's one of my goals here. Most importantly, as you go into next week, trade well.